Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to see the Maharashtra State Board Class 10 Science 1 Chapter Number 9 Carbon Compounds and this is the third part of the video for the particular chapter. In the first two parts already we have discussed a lot about the carbon and the, its properties then the uh, why it's called as the versatile element, its characteristics of the carbon then the carbon compounds, hydrocarbons, saturated and unsaturated hydrocarbons, homologous series those things already we have done. So today we are going to begin with uh, the chemical properties of carbon compounds in that the first what we have to discuss is the combustion. Combustion that is the carbon reacting with the oxygen it's produced the heat and light. Same way the uh, carbon compounds also hydrocarbons especially like here the example they have taken of the methane is reacting with the oxygen and forming the heat and light along with the carbon dioxide and the water molecule. Same way the another example they have taken over here is of the ethanol that is also producing carbon dioxide, water molecule, heat and light. The another property or chemical property what we have to see over here is oxidation. Oxidation is almost the same as the combustion because here also exactly similar thing is happening. The oxygen is getting absorbed with the uh, hydrocarbons or the carbon compounds in the presence of the acidic potassium permanganate or the potassium dichromate and forming the uh, another carbon compound example they have taken over here is the ethanol reacting or taking uh, addition of the or the oxygen goes under the oxidation in the presence of a acidic potassium permanganate and in this it's forming the ethanoic acid Further is the addition reaction in this uh, addition of the some other components or the some other atoms are taking place by breaking the uh, double bonds or the triple bond between the carbon and carbon atom. Here the example they have given as a steric acid, oleic acid, plumetic acid and the linoleic acid. Further they have given over here is about the uh, hydrogen also it in the presence of the plutonium and the uh, or the nickel it's breaking the bond between double bond between the carbon and carbon atom and getting added to the carbon or it's it attached to the carbons. Further is a substitution reaction. In the substitution reaction here they have taken the example of the methane with the Cl2 that is a chlorine gas in the presence of the sunlight. So here what happened the chlorine replaces one of the hydrogen present in the methane and forming the hydrochloric acid. And suppose if it goes further with the reactions then at the end we are getting the CCL4 carbon tetrachloride and the hydro, hydrogen chloride is getting liberated in each and every step. Now the further thing what we have to study is the uh, carbon compounds ethanol and ethanoic acid the important carbon compounds we have. The chemical properties of ethanol when we talk about the reaction with sodium when it reacts with the sodium is forming the sodium ethoxide all the alcohols react with the sodium metal to liberate a hydrogen gas and form sodium alkoxide salts in the reaction of ethanol with the sodium metal hydrogen gas and sodium ethoxides are formed as products another thing they have given over here is about the methanol the lower homolog of the ethanol is poisonous and intake of its small quantity can affect the vision and at times can be little. To prevent the misuse of the important commercial solvent ethanol, it is mixed with the poisonous methanol. Such ethanol is called denatured sprit. A blue dye is also added to it so that it is easily recognized. Further thing they have given over here is about the dehydration reaction. In the dehydration reaction, when ethanol is heated at a temperature of 170 degrees Celsius, or with excess amount of uh, concentrated sulfuric acid, one molecule of a water is removed from its molecule to form ethene and unsaturated compound. So to form the formation of the ethene, the uh, dehydration process is important. From the ethanol, after the dehydration in the presence of a concentrated sulfuric acid at the 170 degrees Celsius, it can form ethene along with the water molecule. Further as uh, signs they have given over here is about the alcohol of fuel. A sugarcane plant transforms solar energy into chemical energy very efficiently. 
when molasses obtained during production of a sugar from sugar cane is subject to fermentation alcohol is obtained on combustion in a sufficient air ethanol gives carbon dioxide and water as only the products in this way ethanol is a clean fuel therefore in some countries it is used as an additive to increase the efficiency of petrol such as fuel is called gasohol next they have given us about the ethanoic acid ethanoic acid is a colorless liquid with a boiling point of 118 degrees celsius ethanoic acid is commonly known as acetic acid its aqueous solution is acidic and turns blue litmus red vinegar which is used as a preservative in pickles is 5 to 8 percent aqueous solution of acetic acid the melting point of a pure ethanoic acid is 17 degrees celsius therefore during winter in cold countries ethanoic acid freezes at room temperature itself and look like ice therefore it is named as a glacial acetic acid the further thing is about the ethanoic acid and the hydrochloric acid they have mentioned over here next is the chemical properties of ethanoic acid reaction with a base acidic acid when it's reacting with the base like a sodium hydroxide it forms the uh, salt of a sodium along with the water molecule and the uh, IUPAC name of the salt formed here is a sodium ethanoid while its common name is a sodium acetate reaction with a carbonate and a bicarbonate when we talk about its reaction with the carbonate and the bicarbonate here they have given is about for the carbonate acetic acid reacting with the sodium carbonate forming again the same way as the sodium ethanoid along with the water and the carbon dioxide further is the reaction with the sodium bicarbonate here also the same product is formed with the water and carbon dioxide next is the esterification reaction esterification reaction means the formation of the scented chemicals esterification is nothing but a substance having ester as a functional group are formed by reaction between a carboxylic acid and an alcohol when these two are reacting it's forming the ester the reaction for this they have mentioned over here that is the ethanoic acid reacting with the ethanol acid as a catalyst and it's forming the ethyl ethanoid along with the water further is ester have a sweet odor majority of our fruits owe their odor to a particular ester present in them Esters are used for making fragrances and the flavoring agents. When an ester is reacted with the alkali sodium hydroxide, the corresponding alcohol and carboxylic acid in a form of the sodium salt are obtained back. This reaction is called as a saponification reaction and it is used for the preparation of a soap from fats. So here the re general reaction they have given over here is a ester reacting with the sodium hydroxide forming a sodium carboxylate and alcohol. The next word we have to study is about the macromolecules and the polymers. Macromolecules are nothing but the uh, number of the carbon compounds as large as about 10 millions. And the range of their molecular masses as large as 10 raised to 1 to 10 raised to 12. The number of constituent atoms is very large for the molecules with a high molecular mass. The giant carbon molecules formed from uh, Hundreds of thousands of atoms are called macromolecules. They are from the type of compounds called polymers. Natural macromolecules in that we have the uh, polysaccharides, proteins and the nucleic acids are the supporting pillars of the living world. We get food, clothing and shelter from polysaccharides, namely starch and cellulose. Protein constitute a large part of the body's animals and also they are responsible for their movement and various physiological processes. Nucleic acid control the healthy at molecular level. Rubber is another type of natural macromolecule. After that, the man-made macromolecules are also there. Macromolecules were produced for the first time in the laboratory and factory with the intention to invent an alternative for rubber and silk. Today, man-made macromolecules are in use in every walk of life. Man-made fibers which have a strength along with the length 
similar to natural fiber cotton wool and silk elastomers which have the elastic property of rubber plastics from which innumerable types of article sheets pipes and surface coating are made up are all examples of the man-made macromolecules the structure of a natural and a man-made macromolecules is formed by joining several small units in a regular interval or the manner as a result the macromolecules are polymeric in nature and the last two they have given on this page that is the polymers macromolecules formed by regular repetition of a small unit is called polymer this is a definition for the polymer so a macromolecule formed by regular repetition of a small unit is called polymer the small unit that repeats regularly to form a polymer is called monomer that single unit will be called as a monomer the reaction by which monomer molecules are converted into a polymer is called as a polymerization another thing they have given over here is a one important method of a polymerization is to take make a polymer by joining alkene type monomers for example synthesis of a polyethylene is shown further in the table you can see over here ethylene monomer this is ethylene monomer and this all are connecting together and forming a polyethylene further there another things they have given over here is the name of a polymer and the constituent monomer and the formulas they have given the structure formula of the polymer and their uses in that the polyethylene they have given which already we have seen over here polystyrene which is used for the thermocols actually c6h5 ch with a double bond with the ch2 and this is what the structural formula we have this n indicates what the poly nature of this particular components or the monomers further is uh, another examples they have given the polymers in the above examples are formed by repetition of a single monomer that already we have discussed these are called uh, homopolymers the other type of polymers are formed from two or more monomers here only the single type of uh, monomers were repeating there is a possibility that the different uh, kind of the monomers are connecting together and forming the polymers for that uh, they have given over here is a polymer name of the monomer and the occurrence polysaccharides glucose and its occur in a starch then the cellulose then the monomer is a glucose again and it's formed in the wood then the uh, proteins alpha amino acids muscles hair enzymes skin egg dna that is a nucleotide base deoxyribose phosphate and uh, it's found in a chromosomes of animals further that is the rna and the rubber also they have mentioned over here for the rna nucleotide there is a base ribose phosphate and the chromosomes of plants and for the rubber it is a isoprene and latex of rubber tree further they have given over here is about the from the given structural formula polyvinyl acetate that is used in paints and glues deduce the name and structural formula of the corresponding monomer so this is the monomer we have so this is all about the chapter carbon compounds in the coming video we will see some more chapter from the science